You suffered so much. I promised you salvation. But I was too late. Yo, what's going on, Epic 7 fam? Pat here, back with another how to play video. This is the guide series where I teach you almost everything there is to know about an Epic 7 character. From what their basic stats are, to what their skills do, how to fight them in PvP, and how to actually gear them properly. Today's episode will be focusing on Empyrean Illinav, who is, as of the recording of this video, one of the strongest characters in the game, and arguably also one of the most versatile heroes that we've ever gotten. Before we jump into Illinav's stats though, I do want to give a quick shout out to Wizard Crab for sponsoring this video. Without you, this would not have been possible, so thank you so, so much. Without any further ado, Let's jump into Illinab's stats. Empyrean Illinab is a light knight of the Cancer Zodiac symbol. Her stat line is unique to her. Take a closer look at her stat line. She has 794 attack, 767 defense, 7,332 health, 95 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. This translates to the overall tankiest stat line in Epic 7, assuming that we forego things like HP increases or damage mitigation granted by characters' passives. It comes at the expense, though, of being one of the slowest characters in the entire game. Luckily for us, though, that is kind of mitigated, and you'll find out about that in the very next section when we talk about her skills. But before we move on to that, let's talk about some voiceover trivia. In the English dub of Epic 7, Ilanav, as well as all versions of Rowana, are voiced by Christina V. I've talked about her probably a dozen or so times here on the channel at this point. She's probably the voiceover artist that I mentioned the most. She is one of the most successful female voiceover artists of the last 20 years in the anime and video game space. So the story goes, she wanted to become a voiceover artist as a child after watching Sailor Moon. After years of attending voiceover panels at anime conventions, she would be offered a job interview by none other than Birgitta's English voiceover artist, Wendy Lee. She would then go on to voice Sailor Mars in Sailor Moon Crystal, as well as hundreds of other characters throughout her career. I would say that is a childhood dream achieved. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Ilanav is voiced by Mikaku Komatsu, who you may know as Maki Zenin from Jujutsu Kaisen, or Fei Shao from the upcoming Honkai Star Rail patch. Empyrean Ilanab's skill 1 is Sword of Punishment. It has a 1x attack multiplier, as well as a 10% max health multiplier. It heals Ilanab for 35% of the damage dealt. Additionally, it inflicts injuries on the target up to 10% of the damage dealt. For the future of the Wind Tribe. Ilanab's basic skill is actually kinda cracked the longer you think about it. The closest comparison I could find to it is that of Apocalypse Ravi, which is a character with arguably the best bruiser basic skill in Epic 7. Both characters have a 1x attack multiplier, which is a lot higher than the general 0.7x attack multiplier that a bruiser usually has in this game. Both characters have innate 10% injury on the attack, which is almost like having the injury set itself, which is 12%. So you just basically get the injury set for free on your basic skill. Both characters also recover health when they deal damage. Apocalypse Robbie heals 30%, Ilanav heals 35%. Ilanav has the higher base HP, while Ravi has the higher base to attack. What I'm basically trying to get at here is that this character is very similar in terms of basic skills to Apocalypse Ravi, and that's really good, because that means she has amazing applications on the destruction set, as well as the counter set by default. And since she's a knight and not a warrior like Robbie, she has access to some pretty terrifying artifacts that can abuse this basic skill like Elbrus Ritual Sword. Empyrean Ilanab's skill 2 is her signature passive, Dragon's Pride. It increases the penetration resistance of all allies by 20-30% to 30 depending on Malagora. After every attack suffered by an ally, and this includes Ilanab herself, it increases the combat readiness of Ilanab by 10%. Yes, that does mean that if your opponent uses an AoE attack, that is a 40% combat readiness increase for Ilanav. So much for the 95 base speed, I guess. Ilanav's passive drastically reduces the damage that your team takes from anything that reads, penetrates the target's defense, or from any single target attacks from heroes wearing the penetration set. 30% penetration resistance doesn't seem like a lot, but I assure you, it's absolutely a lot. How much so? 
let's take a look at some examples, shall we? First up, Genoa. An enraged torrent set Genoa with 4,000 attack, 300 crit damage, and a soul burn to give him greater attack buff on just the S3 alone yields 21,792 damage. The total combo with the S1 factored in is probably close to 28 or 29,000 damage. If you have Empyrean Illinab on your team, well then the damage of the skill 3 goes from 21,792 to just 8,717. Midnight Galililius. Let's take her with 4,000 attack, 300 crit damage on a torrent set. With max penetration on the S3, basically you have the maximum amount of HP differential between the targets. That would yield 27,290 damage. With Empyrean Illinav on the team, that damage is reduced to 10,916. Final example, Strazen. With 4,000 attack, 300 crit damage, attack buff, and the Torrent set. Star Extinction under those circumstances is going to do 45,752 damage to the target that has the most amount of HP. If Empyrean Illinav is on the team, that damage goes from 45,000 to just 18,301. So yeah, Dragon's Pride is absurdly powerful. That said, I don't really think it's as broken as players made it out to be before she was released. It doesn't protect you from defense break at all, and that's what a lot of the standard aggressive comps are playing that use things like Ran and, say, Bloodblade Karin. They still roll over Empyrean Illinav, in my experience, pretty easily. It's only when Empyrean Illinav is paired with another damage mitigation source, such as, say, another Arius Knight, versus a penetration DPS like Eternal Wander Ludwig, that I think she starts to give those types of team compositions a real problem. Moving on to Illinab's skill 3, it is Unyielding Blow. You acquire 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is a single target attack with a 1x attack multiplier, as well as an 18% max health multiplier. It inflicts injuries on the target up to 20% of the damage dealt. Additionally, it cleanses 2 debuffs from all allies before granting Indomitable to all allies for 2 turns. In case you forgot what Indomitable does, because it's only on Peacemaker Furious, aside from Empyrean Illinav, it is an undispellable buff that increases the defense and effect resistance of all allies by 30%. This spear will be the spear of protection! not give in to despair. Unyielding blow as a move kind of rubs me the wrong way. In card game terminology, it's what we would call like a color pie break. It's an ability that normally shouldn't be inherently available to a specific archetype or a specific color in a game. When I think of the old school rules of Epic 7, tanks and bruisers are supposed to be weak versus control. Basically, debuffs can kind of lock them down and make it so that they can't play the game. Having this character have a cleanse built into it is just, you know, it doesn't really sit super well with me. The fact that it also makes her team tankier and further helps her team resist debuffs, yeah, the character just feels like a bit too well-rounded. The fact that she has a strong basic skill, a powerful passive, a cleanse, and has got the tankiest knight stat line in the entire game makes her just absurdly flexible and it's going to be the subject of the next section when we talk about character builds. For now though, let's talk about her soul burn. For the cost of 10 souls, Sword of Punishment has its health scaling multiplier increased from 10% to 17% of her max health. Additionally, it inflicts bonus damage equal to 50% of the character's total injured HP pool. This soul burn cannot trigger a dual attack. Not surrender. I think that this soul bird is pretty absurd if you have Illinav on one of the damage based builds because then it just functions very similarly to Urban Shadow Shoes Operation Cream Pastry or the soul burn from the original Red Illinav. It just completely deletes characters when they're at the maximum of 50% injured HP. It's probably overkill to have one of the tankiest characters in the game deal damage comparable to Apocalypse Robbie and also can still be a cleanser and a support and a tank. Yeah. 
When it comes to Mulligora priorities, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Just plus 15 Imperial Elenav. Her S1, even if you decide to build her as a tank, having extra damage increases the amount of injury, inflicts, and also gives her bonus lifesteal, which lets her stay alive a lot longer. Obviously, the signature skill is going to be the S2, which you're going to want to max out because it's the main reason to play the character. And the S3 is probably the one I'd max probably last. But even then, it still has cooldown reduction, and having the extra damage, again, translates to just more injury, so why wouldn't you take it? This video was one of the hardest how-to-play videos I've ever made. Not so much from the editing, but from the research. I usually make it a point to not make guides for brand new characters, as their metagame is kinda still in flux. Things can drastically change from one week to the next with newer characters. Nothing hurts more than spending 10 plus hours making a how to play video only for that guide to feel obsolete by week's end because of some new discovery. Considering Wizard Crab was kind enough to sponsor this video, I couldn't not deliver something though. There had to be a how to play Imperian Illinab available before her banners end, even if I would be pushed right up against the deadline. Illinab's skill set is so versatile and she can do so many things that in order to cover all of my bases for this guide, I decided to go with not one, not two, not even three, but five builds for Empyrean Illinab in this video. This is the most I've covered in a single how to play video. I'll try my best to explain everything while keeping things super brief in order to cut down on the video time. The five builds in this video are going to be number one, a destruction set DPS build for those of you who like to play aggressively. Number two, a counter set DPS build that's very similar to the first one, except it's more oriented towards standard or turn two players. Number three, a tank build for those of you that want to use Illinav as their one-stop shop for all things damage and mitigation. Number four, an effect resistance build so you can lean into the cleanse found on her ultimate unyielding blow. And finally, number five, an anti-cleave specialist built to cut in front of any ran who tries to defense break your entire team that's not at least like 325 to 330 speed or so and obviously isn't taking a combat readiness cut like politis or abyssal euphine you may have noticed that there is no injury or revenge set build amongst the five in this video and that's because they were really similar to the first two, and on top of that, they have the absolute worst win rate of all the builds on the World Arena ladder currently. So yeah, it doesn't really inspire confidence. Let's jump into it by talking about that Destruction DPS build first and foremost. Taking a look at our primary sets, I am on a Destruction set for our primary 4-piece, with Penetration set as our primary 2-piece. Penetration gives the most amount of damage for this character, which is why it is the primary set piece. But if you don't have amazing Penetration gear, then you can also choose things like Health set, Critical Hit Chance set, or Immunity set. Taking a look at our desired stats, I have 1449 attack. This is simply Illinois' base attack with an I-90 weapon and the recommended, and I say recommended loosely, Artifact Heal Ag Lance. This is basically the budget artifact that works on every version of Illinav, but is not necessarily the best. So for most of my desired stats for attack for this section, it's gonna appear as 1449. Just know that that's because I'm assuming you're on Heal Ag Lance, but Heal Ag, again, I don't think is the best version of the character in any kind of like capacity. I just think it's the budget option or it is a playstyle preference. I, myself, have personal preferences, things that I think are quite a bit better. And after I talk about the per piece averages in this section, I will kind of lay out my case for which artifact I think is the best one overall to play on LNM. Moving on to defense, I have 1500 defense because this is where you kind of expect a tankier bruiser or like a tank itself to actually uh, start to fall for defense stats. If you can't hit this, like in the 1400s, it's probably still fine. Health is 25k, not only for big bulk, but also it helps further our damage because we are a health scaler. Speed, I have 160 here, but I can see you going a bit slower at like 150. The best ones have like 170 or 175 if you can get that. Critical hit chance is 100% because we are a DPS. And critical hit damage is 280%. I know myself personally, I was playing 300% and some of the best ones have even a bit higher than that. So ideally, for this build, you want to be focusing on health, speed, and critical hit damage because these will give you the most amount of overall DPS on the character. 
Take a look at our right side pieces. I'm on a health percentage necklace, but you can play a critical hit damage or critical hit chance necklace. Remember, anytime you're on destruction set, critical hit chance necklace becomes a pretty enticing proposition. But for me, the math works best with the health percentage necklace. For ring, I'm on health percentage for not only the bulk, but the damage. And my boots are speed so I can take turns in a timely fashion, although health percentage can also work for you. Taking a look at my per piece average, I'm at 11% defense, 15% health, 4 speed, 14% critical hit chance, and 11% critical hit damage. As for other artifact choices, I personally really like Elbrus Ritual Sword on the Destruction Penetration build. But just know that if you do get focused down, uh, you're not going to be getting any Elbrus Brock, so it does lose a bit of value. Mature Sunglasses, even though it's limited, is a very good option and probably the most successful one that people have found with this build. So kind of to play it safe, Destruction Penetration on Mature Sunglasses is a pretty good option with Elbrus and Helag Lance being other secondary options if you so choose. Our second build is going to be the Counter DPS build that is more geared towards turn two. Take a look at our primary sets. Our four piece set is going to be the Counter set, obviously, because without it, we can't be a counter build we'd be something completely different and our primary two piece set is health now you might be asking hey sue why is this one on health as opposed to the other one being on penetration didn't you say with the destruction pen build that penetration gives the most amount of damage for a two piece set that is still true here the thing is destruction set gives the most amount of free stats for a set in epic seven counter gives the least at zero so we have to make up for the lost stats somehow, and for most players, I feel like health set is going to be the way for you to do that. You are more than welcome to play penetration, critical hit chance, or immunity as alternative two piece sets, but in the case of something like penetration or immunity, it's going to be very difficult for most people to hit comparable performance of the destruction set without using either the crit or the health sets. You just simply don't get any free stats from counter or pen, and so you're lagging a whole whopping like 60 to 70 gear score behind just playing the destruction build only the like super late game or high rank players can really i think bring out that counter penetration set and make it as good as the destruction penetration sets so if you don't have insane counter pen gear i would just stick with counter health take a look at our desired stats we have 1400 defense which is a little bit lower than the destruction build and you may have noticed also the critical hit damage is at 250 percent which is lower than the 280 from destruction remember that set gives a bunch of free stats, so we have to make some compromises somewhere. To make up for the loss in bulk and the loss of damage, we've upped the health to 26k plus. I personally play around like 27 or 28k on this build. That's basically trying to help supplement the lower defense and the lower critical hit damage, because remember, we get damage from building health percentage on this character. For speed, I have 150, but I recognize that if you can't hit that, 140 is fine. The best ones have like 160 or 170 speed while still maintaining pretty good stats here. Basically, our speed breakpoints for this character are around 150, 170, and 200. Those are kind of your three speed tiers that you kind of want to be in for Illini. Taking a look at our right side pieces here, I'm on a critical hit damage necklace, but you could play a health percentage necklace if you have really, really good gear. Ring is going to be health percentage for not only the bulk, but the damage. And the boots here are health percentage for me. But it could also be easier for you to use speed boots. Basically, it depends on your gear, whether you not use health percentage boots or speed boots. I leave that to you. Taking a look at the per piece average for this build, it's going to be 8% defense, 14% health, 9 speed, 14% critical hit chance, and 6% critical hit damage. As for the artifact choice, Elbrus Ritual Sword, I think, is by far the best option for this build. You could, I guess, potentially play like Holy Sacrifice or Mature Sunglasses. But to me, Elbrus Ritual Sword is kind of like the de facto counter set DPS artifact. And I think it works super good here. If they focus Illinab down, she's going to heal back up with lifesteal, get a bunch of injury. Uh, if she hits your allies, you might Elbrus, again, get some chip damage, injury, healing, keeps her alive for a lot longer. Me personally, this second build, this is the one I've had the most success and the most fun with. But it's not necessarily the highest win rate version of the character on ladder. Our third build is a primary tank version of Empyrean Illinab. Taking a look at our primary sets, I am going to be on a four-piece counter set and a two-piece health set. Now, that's not to say that the counter set is the best, you know, set to play for a tank Illinab. It just, it gives zero free stats, which makes the math easier. You are more than welcome to play 
you know, speed or revenge or whatever four-piece set. You could play six health if you want. Just to keep math simple, we decided to go with a four-piece set that gave zero bonus stats. Therefore, this build you could assume is a floor, and if you can do better, then more power to you. Alternative two-piece sets can be things like immunity, defense, or even resistance if you want to go for like 100 ER on the character. Looking at our desired stats, since we only really need defense, health, and speed as a given on this build, I decided to go sky high on the bulk at 1600 defense and 33k health. The low end for health is probably like 28-29k for this build, and what I was playing on stream when I first tried this was about like 36.8k, so almost 37k, so I decided to go for the midpoint at 33k. We talked about speed breakpoints already at like how 150, 170, and 200 are the breakpoints. So I kind of decided to go with like 170 speed for this build. But if you want to go like 150 and then go for like maybe 85 to 100 effect resistance, then you can absolutely do that. Kind of take away the low effectiveness like versions of uh, like random debuffs that DPS might have. Make it so she doesn't really get hit by those. And that way when you get indomitable up, you can block some of the even chunkier kind of effectiveness characters. I leave that decision to you. Taking a look at the right side pieces here. I have for the necklace, ring, and boots health percentage because we just want to be turbo thick, giga thick girl. We don't want to die. We want her just to be as tanky as possible. If there's any wiggle room here, the boots could be speed depending on your speed, like thresholds, the stats on it, things like that. Take a look at the per piece average here. 14% defense, a whopping 28% health per piece average, and 13 speed. That 28% per piece average seems really intimidating but it's not as bad as it seems remember we decided that all three of our right side pieces have health percentage main stats which means we can't have health percentage on the subs meaning either all of your left side pieces need to have 28 percent health on them or ideally all of your health percentage right side pieces have flat health on them to help lighten the load if you all have like say like three or four hundred flat health on the right side pieces, then realistically, it's only like 15 to 18% per piece average on the health on the left side, which makes it seem a lot more manageable. As for artifact choices for the tank, Aureus is obviously the go-to if you want her to be a main tank, but if you want to play her in like a hyper carry comp where you have like Abyssal Euphine and another main tank on Aureus, you could play her on like Adamant Shield. If she's only used for like Guild Wars or specific like aggressive comps, you could play her on Holy Sack. And I know I personally tried 3F on this build and had some success with it, but it's definitely not as good, I think, as just a full DPS build. So if you wanted to go for the 3F build, uh, make sure it's for some reason other than just chasing pure damage, because if you're just trying to chase pure damage, stick to one of the first two builds. The fourth build for Illinav is a resistance slash cleanser build for the character. When we take a look at the primary set, you'll notice there is no primary 4P set. In fact, the primary 2P set is just the six copies of resistance gear basically six resist set so that is kind of the ideal that's the most common way people play it but i have seen also in the alternative four piece set protection set along with two piece resistance set i've also seen four resist to health as an alternative two piece set and also even six health basically you're using the 20 gear score from the resistance set or the health set and kind of supplementing what you're missing from there. So if you decide to go with six health, then all of your pieces focus on ER. If you go with six resist set, then all of your pieces focus on health. Taking a look at the desired stats, we have 1500 defense, 28 KHP, speed is 150, although if you could get it to like 170, that would be great. And our effect resistance here is at 200%. I think the lowest you can get away with with trying to have her as a dedicated cleanser would be like 180 or like 185. Um, that would work really well if you pair her with a character like Maid Chloe, because that's kind of the threshold that like Maid Chloe usually operates at is around like 180 and stuff. So if you want to go like 180 and play her with Maid Chloe every game, then that absolutely will work out for you. Take a look at our right side pieces, health percentage necklace for the bulk, effect resistance ring because it makes the math the easiest. Boots are going to be health percentage, but you could also play speed if you so choose. Our per piece average here is 14% defense, 25% health. 9 speed, and then I have here 15% effect resistance. As for artifacts, I've seen Aureus work on this build, but me personally, I think if I was going to play her as a dedicated cleanser, I'd probably go with Bastion of Hope or like Holy Sacrifice. Those are probably the two I'd focus on. Probably more so Bastion of Hope. Our final build is going to be an anti-cleave version of Empyrean Illinav. 
basically you're trying to take advantage of the 40 percent combat readiness from dragon's pride in her passive when a cleave team tries to use an aoe attack to set up for a kill so essentially if like ran goes for an aoe defense break ilanab gets 40 percent combat readiness push so now you have to ask yourself how fast are the really high end cleave openers for ran that's about 320 speed or so at the highest level and therefore we can assume 320 speed times 0.4 which is 40 percent a 40 percent combat readiness push relative to a 320 speed opener is 128 speed so we basically have to overtake 328 speed in order to actually cut in front of them with ilanath the simplest way to do that is about 200 base speed which is why i talked about it being a break point for this character in the previous builds so if you want to have an Ilanab that will cut in front of a Ran when he tries to go for a defense break, well, then this is the build for you. Just make sure they don't have Red Politis or Abyssal Euphine on the team. Looking at our primary sets, we are on a speed set as our primary four piece set because we're trying to go as fast as possible on this very, very slow character. And for the primary two piece sets, I went with Penetration because, hey, you still need damage to actually close out a game versus Cleave. It's not enough to stabilize. You actually still have to kill them to win. But alternatives that you could use are crit, immunity, and health if you so choose. Looking at the desired stats, it should be pretty you know, familiar for most of these stats. Defense is 1500 and health is 25k. Speed is that all-important 200 speed breakpoint that we just talked about. And critical hit chance is still 100% because we are trying to do damage and actually kill them. For the critical hit damage though, I went with 200%. Kind of drop it down a little bit because we want to hyper invest in speed and other stats, right? So that is why that is at 200%. But if you can go higher, like 250 plus, then more power to you. Take a look at our right side pieces. I'm on a health percentage necklace in order to make this as easy as possible. But for most of you that want to try to eke out as much damage as possible on a very fast Illinav, you are more than welcome to go with critical hit damage. Ring is still health percentage for the bulk and the damage. And boots are speed because, well, speed is paramount for this build if we don't cut in front of the ran, uh, then yeah, it doesn't really actually do anything. Taking a look at the per piece average here, we have 11% defense, 15% health, 8 speed, 14% critical hit chance, and 8% critical hit damage. As for artifact choices, literally anything would work in here because you're basically playing this against A weak cleave. So like I could see Elbrus being decent. I could see Helag Lance if they decide to not pull the trigger on the AoE and go that route. I could see Arius. I could see Holy Sack. Literally anything works. This is basically dealer's choice based on what kind of cleave you're having trouble with and what ones you want to bring Elanav into. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. Empyrean Elanav is a jack of all trades style character, as you no doubt know by now. She has good damage, great defensive capabilities for her team, and a cleanse versus debuff characters. She's very versatile and will work with a good chunk of the cast in a lot of scenarios. Whether you're a more defensive oriented player like myself, or someone who likes to play Epic 7 very aggressively. Let's talk about some teammates that I found during my testing that I think work really well with her. First up, tanks. While Ambitious Tywin can work as he's the meta tank right now, I also really like Albedo and Crimson Armin. Empyrean Illinav doesn't naturally prevent damage if you have her built as a DPS. Having natural damage mitigation on your team makes her exceedingly difficult to kill. Similarly, having characters on your team that can revive, such as Blood Moon Haste, or Maid Chloe make Illinav and her team very hard to deal with. Maid Chloe in particular is very powerful from what I've found with this character. The combination of free ER from Maid Chloe's passive, the artifact she's most likely on, and the indomitable buff from Illinav can stop some lower effectives teams in their tracks, especially if it's a death deal array who isn't playing near 200% effectiveness. Injury characters are also good, such as Alencia or Urban Shadow Shoe. If you can rack up a huge amount of injury on the target, Illinab Soulburn is nearly a guaranteed kill. Finally, Sea Phantom Politis and Conqueror Elias are also good choices for this character if you want to play at a faster pace. Moving on to good matchups, if you've been paying attention since the skill section, then you know all about Dragon's Pride and how much damage it reduces from defense penetrating moves. We already talked about how she's good versus Straze, Genua, and Midnight Galilius in the skill section, but other defense penetrating heroes like Lionheart Sermia Jacko Valentine, and even Eternal Wanderer Ludwig can be good matchups for you. I want to take a second to talk about that Ludwig matchup, though. 
I personally haven't had great success with her in this matchup while on the counter set or the destruction set, so I really wouldn't rely on her on those builds in those scenarios. The World Arena ladder data suggests that she does win super often versus Ran and Ludwig Cleave, but my assumption is that it's most likely going to be on the anti-cleave or tank builds, not necessarily the DPS builds. Finally, I do want to talk about the fact that Ilanav is an injury character, let's not forget that. That makes her fairly good against a lot of the meta health scaling heroes such as like Laia or Dragon Bride Senya. Finally, let's talk about Empyrean Ilanav's bad matchups. At the end of the day, it's important to remember, even if this character is amazing on paper, she is still a very slow health scaling bruiser. Dragon's Pride may reduce the damage from penetrating moves, but it does very little to save you from naturally high damage skills from characters like Arbiter Vildred or Bloodblade Karim. Even if this character has a cleanse in her kit, it's on a 4 turn cooldown, meaning that you can just control her with characters like Sea Phantom Paldus or Ambitious Tywin. Both of these characters are capable of defense breaks, although Paldus requires an artifact to do so. Defense Break is one of the ways that I personally found to be very effective at dismantling Ilanav and removing her from the game. If Aggression isn't your strong suit though, Injury is a great option. It drastically reduces the effectiveness of Ilanav's damage, so using characters like Alencia, Red Ravi, or Urban Shadow Shu will put in a lot of work against this character. And that is going to do it for how to play Empyrean Ilanav. If I missed anything, as always, you can let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this kind of video, please leave a like or a subscribe. It helps me out here a ton. And you should see a playlist on your screen now to check out more how to play guides in the same style. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.